Hi, my name is Alan Goldberg. I'm the resident services manager at Lucha. Today we're going to talk about our resident services, but specifically about our health and wellness work we do for our tenants and the people who live in West Humboldt Park. Um, I'd like to introduce Rachel. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, hi, my name is Rachel Wilson and I am Lucha's Health and Wellness Fellow. So my job is to connect Lucha residents to health and wellness services in the Humboldt Park area as well as to create my own programming and invite tenants to join in on learning about how to live healthier and participating in health and wellness activities such as Zumba, such as eating healthy food, and such as learning about health insurance and I'll talk more about that later. Yeah, so I'd like to for those of you who aren't familiar with Lucha, talk a little bit about Lucha and, and talk about how we got to health and wellness and the really fabulous work that Rachel's doing. Uh, Lucha's been working in the Humboldt Park community for over 30 years. Um, it was formed out of an organizing response to displacement uh, of the Puerto Rican community, um, first from the area around Old Town and then as that area developed and the community was pushed into Lincoln Park and then when that community developed it ended up in West Town and Humboldt Park and Logan Square and Lucho was a response that said well this is a community that where we're going to stay no more getting pushed out and Lucho was part of a response to take that on from the housing side so we buy buildings rehab them and rent them as affordable housing um, not just for Puerto Rican and Latino households, but for the general community. Um, we also work with homeowners, trying to find people who are wanting to buy and become homeowners. We have first-time homebuyer training. We also work with home buyers who are experiencing difficulty and perhaps facing foreclosure. And we also work with seniors who are perhaps having problems with their buildings or are trying to figure out some way that they can stay in their housing um, as their incomes diminish um, in their later years. So we got to wellness um, from some work we've been doing with our tenants and we were planning a new development that's called Tierra Linda and we had the idea of saying okay from the very beginning from the very first drawing, the planning, coming up with the materials we're going to use. How can we make Terra Linda um, a wellness-centered development? How can we use materials that are healthy? How can we help tenants lead healthy lives? How can we make the building safer? Um, and how can we perhaps reach out to people who have health issues um, and make Terra Linda a welcoming place? Um, we were very, very fortunate um, to get funded by the Enterprise Foundation and uh, Rachel is our health and wellness fellow and one of the things that we did as we were preparing to get Tierra Linda underway it uh, started construction last fall and we expect to have it the first buildings coming online in the spring um, is we worked with our existing tenants and looked at a number of um, health and wellness issues and two things jumped out at us right away. One was that an enormous number of our tenants ride bicycles. And they do it for fun, but they also do it for economic reasons, because it's their mo major form of transportation. Um, and it also helps the environment, because it's fewer cars that are on the street when people are riding buses. I'm not riding buses, riding bikes, instead of taking the bus. Um, we also worked on our gardens. Uh, we had been having gardens for a number of years and we found that, you know, people liked gardening but they weren't quite sure what to do with uh, fresh vegetables. And so we started to look at um, options on how to work with people on cooking. Um, so all of that led us to Rachel um, and she's been work with us now a number of months and um, I'd like to just really turn it over to her and she can talk about the work she does both in terms of sustainability but also buildings are healthy and that uh, West Humboldt Park and the areas around West Humboldt Park can work together to become healthy. So. 
Thank you so much for the introduction, Alan. Um, as Alan said, I am Rachel Wilson, Lucha's Health and Wellness Fellow. I've been with Lucha for about six months now, but in that time, I've had a great opportunity to work with Lucha tenants and implement some really important health and wellness programming in our buildings. So the first one that I'd like to talk about is our healthy cooking class. Um, so that is located at our Humboldt Park Residence Building, which is on Christiana and Division. And I work very closely with Emma Epstein, our Supportive Services Coordinator, to get that program going. So we partner with Cooking Matters, which is a national organization that teaches organizations like Lucha how to um, teach residents about fresh and healthy cooking cooking with fresh and healthy food. So every week, every Thursday, we have a cooking class in which we invite our residents of the Humble Park building to come down and help us prepare some food. And now the recipes can come from myself, they can come from um, my coworker Emma, or they, we would like them, um, we encourage the residents to actually bring their own recipes that they can then share with the group. So, for example, we've made chorizo and eggs, we've made butternut squash curry, we've made delicious turkey tacos and chili, and a lot of the recipes we choose because they can feed a lot of people and they do have fresh and healthy elements. So we'll either go to the grocery store or the farmer's market to pick up fresh vegetables to add to the food. Now, um, we also will talk about the nutritional value of the food as we're cooking it. So for example, when we made our butternut squash curry, we talked about the health benefits of butternut squash, including um, that it's good for your blood pressure. So this cooking class um, provides an opportunity for residents to come down and try cooking with foods that they may not have been, that they may not use in every day their everyday cooking, but it gives everyone an opportunity to learn together about cooking different recipes and we're actually working on a cookbook full of the recipes that we've cooked in the past six months that we're going to have for sale at our Lucha offices. Rachel, can I ask you to talk about, the, um, I'm a gardener and I always liked working in the garden at um, that particular building um, and I, the classes I think were sometimes geared around um, what we had too much of in the yes. garden. And so, yes, and so definitely. I'd be sitting in the lobby of the building and everyone would come up from the basement and everyone would go out into the garden and they'd start cutting things mm -hmm. and take them downstairs and cook them. So why don't you yeah. talk about that? So we have grown, in our garden we grew kale, we grew squashes, we grew peppers and tomatoes and the most, uh, we had the most of kale. So a lot of our recipes um, at the very beginning of the cooking class when the kale was nice and fresh and in season included kale. So we made chicken parmesan with kale we had <laughs> kale and curries and um, a lot, we found a lot of creative ways to incorporate it into our cooking class. So that's another thing that makes our cooking class very unique is because we use the fresh ingredients picked straight out of the ground in some, right. in some ways. Now, of course, it's winter, so we can't do that as much, but we're looking forward to next year. Um, and we're hoping to create a little gardening club where the residents can have um, some input on what we're planting and how we're going to use it in recipes. So we also are open if anyone is interested in joining in our cooking class. We have some of our neighbors who don't actually live with Lucha. Um, we have um, two women who come quite often from the neighborhood to join in, in our cooking classes. Um, so one of the other things that's really important um, that connects to the cooking classes is um, our trips to the West Town Health Market. Now that's another thing, it happens every first and third Thursday of the month from uh, June till it, it just actually ended in December. So we are un unfortunately not going anymore, but that was a huge part of this summer and fall was going on group trips with residents to the West Town Health Market. And um, because uh, we are a very um, well-known organization in the Humboldt Park community, we were able to leverage a partnership between the Presence and St. Mary's and Elizabeth Hospital as well as West Town Bikes in uh, receiving what's called food bucks for Lucha residents. So that is essentially a $25 gift certificate to the, um, the market that we gave to any Lucha resident who was interested. And they could then use that money to go and look for fresh and healthy food from the market. So we had a lot of people who got berries, cucumbers, um, butternut squash, broccoli, all of the delicious things that are grown locally 
around the Midwest region that then come to the market are able to be purchased by our residents um, using their gift certificate, which is very um, wonderful for us and for them because a lot of time um, fresh and healthy food unfortunately is not very affordable so it's it's great to be able to have that access to um, such an important health resource right. um, and I would say that when we were looking at putting this together I saw a program in New York that actually had doctors at a participating hospital could write a prescription mm -hmm. and that people could take that prescription to a farmers market and get vegetables and I said, boy, how can we do that here in Chicago? And then Rachel and Emma um, worked out this arrangement. So that's essentially what we can do is that yeah. people can uh, experience fresh vegetables and other kind of produce um, in a way that um, isn't intimidating on the cost side. So. Right. Definitely, and um, the presence in St. Mary's Hospital actually does give out um, those vouchers to the same that they do in that hospital in New York. They give um, healthy food as a prescription, and that's really um, something that we value too as an organization is looking at um, sort of the root causes of health inequalities, and one of those is access to fresh and healthy food. Some neighborhoods, and Humble Park included, um, don't have as much access to affordable fresh and healthy vegetables. So that's something that the market is really, really great for and we really hope that they'll be back next year so we can keep going on trips. And speaking of trips, yes. I would like to um, just sort of highlight another really important part of our trips to the market and our cooking class in that um, during when we were drafting our health action plan, which sort of guides how we as an organization are going to address health inequalities among our residents. Um, a lot of residents discussed feeling isolated and alone and not like they didn't have as much social connections as they wanted in their buildings and in their neighborhoods. So the cooking class and the market have provided opportunities for residents to come down and get to know each other and have um, a way to interact and just, you know, joke around and, you know, become you know, close friends with each other. So I have become friends with a lot of our residents this way by going to the market and and um, facilitating the cooking class. And it feels like we are a little cooking class and market family almost. So that's another thing that's really important is that the residents are getting excited every week for the cooking class and the market. And it's something that um, can really bring people together. So as you'll see, that's one of our residents, Gloria, cooking um, uh, chorizo and eggs, that was one of the recipes that she shared with us. So um, it gives um, leadership opportunities too because we do really encourage the residents to take on leadership of the cooking class if they're interested. And again, it's you know for all, all levels of interest. If someone just wants to sit and watch and see how we cook, that's fine too. It's all up to their level of comfort. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful program. Um, so yes, that's that's the cooking class. That's sort of our healthy food and um, uh, you know social social interaction piece that that I've been working on. And um, I'd also like to talk about some some other initiatives that I've helped with. Um, one of them being the Operatic Sidewalk Celebrations. So Lucha, as an organization, has partnered with um, Operatic, which is a local group that does um, music and street theater for families. Um, we've partnered with them for the past couple of years, but this year we were really able to sort of get that off the ground um, through a grant that Operatic got. And we were able to provide space for them to set up their activities, and we were able to be sort of the neighborhood liaison between the activities that Operatic put on and the um, the people who lived in the neighborhood, including our residents. Um, so what Operatic does is they set up a series of obstacle courses in different neighborhoods around Chicago, and this summer they set up a series of obstacle courses in the area surrounding Simons Park, where we have a lot of our housing is located right in that area. So it, was, it provided a great opportunity per partnership because we knew families that would be really interested in participating in, in the... Um, uh, sidewalk celebrations and the obstacle courses. So we were able to sort of advertise that and get people out. And um, it served a lot of different purposes. Number one was to just get people out in their neighborhood and meeting each other and starting conversations. Um, and the other was to provide active play for young kids who may 
um, not otherwise be given a chance to go outside without you know parental supervision. So this is sort of addressed um, issues of neighborhood safety as well because when people come out and do something outside in a group, a lot of times they feel safer and less um, less uh, of the risk of crime they feel. And a lot of our residents actually um, told us that these um, sidewalk celebrations provided a great opportunity for people to get out and feel safe in their neighborhood and enjoy um, time with their kids. So, and I would like yes. to say at this point, if you'd like to call in with a question or comment or suggestions of your own about gardening and health and anything related, the number here is 312-738-1300. We would very much like to hear from you. Thank you very much, Alan. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> so another thing that I'll bring up, Alan, I'm, I'm going to talk about our family night that we had recently. That sort of piggybacked off the idea of Operamatic as creating um, space for families to enjoy each other's company and um, have fun and engage in active play with their kids. So recently, um, we sort of took that idea of Operamatic and brought it inside. So we had a family Zumba and craft night about two weeks ago in which we invited Lucha families as well as families from the neighborhood to come in and join us in a Zumba class um, taught by Beats Fitness. Um, it was a really fun class. We Zumbaed for about an hour, and you can see Alan way in the back there. And the youngest... That's because um, Rachel's hiding over here. Yeah, I was hiding from the camera, but um, as you can see, um, we had people of all ages um, coming and doing Zumba with us and the little boy in front was, he kept going, He I think he was like three years old, but he kept Zumba-ing for almost the entire hour. So that was, that was a lot of fun and um, the families really appreciated it and they're asking us, when are we going to have the next Zumba activity? Um, so we actually have um, two more family events coming up. Um, that are open to um, all families, um, no matter where you're from, we will have um, the space open and available for Zumba, and that's going to be on December 29th um, from 6.30 till 7.30, and then on January 5th from 6.30 till 7.30 too. Um, so on the, on the December 29th, we're also going to do a family cooking class, so if that's something that you're interested in participating in, you can contact Lucha. Um, again, our, uh, we've presented our contact info, but here it is for you again. Right here, our number is 773-276-5338. So, um, that's sort of what we're, we're working to create fun and active opportunities for families during the CPS break because we know that sometimes that can drag out a little bit and kids don't know, um, don't have fun activities to do, so that's something that we want to provide. Um, so another thing that I will bring up is, um, so another thing that Alan and I worked on together is our bike giveaway. So we partnered again with Westtown Bikes, who is a very, very valuable partner of ours. Um, they're just located at Division in Rockwell. And um, we partnered with them, as well as the Trust for Public Land, to give away um, bikes to 30 Lucha families. And as you can see, here's a picture of some of our families receiving their bikes before they go on a group bike ride. And this was a really, really fun event um, later in the summer, or or summer early fall where um, we sort of we did like a, a, a lottery system and, and to um, choose the families that would get the bikes and then they came on um, a specific day to come pick up their bikes they were brought by West Town Bikes they learned about bike maintenance a little bit they got bells put on their bikes they learned about starting and stopping on the bikes and um, then we went on some great group rides uh, down the 606 trail. So that's something that's um, a great resource for us, for our residents, and for the neighborhood is um, being so close to that trail where you can do walking Could and you running. talk a little bit about the trail and the Trust for Public Land? Because, uh, you know, it's such a anchor in our community, but I think maybe people in the audience um, who aren't familiar with Humboldt Park might yes. not know enough about the 606 trail. Definitely, Alan. So the 606 is relatively new, and so part of my job is to get people aware that it exists and um, be able to use it if they like. So it's an old abandoned railroad track that goes from, I believe, Ashland to the Exelon Observatory all along Bloomingdale, and that is very close to where we work in Humboldt Park. So um, since, uh, since I started working at Lucha, I've been interested in um, creating programming and um, bringing people to the trail um, in order to 
you know, sort of reap its health and wellness benefits. Of course, it's, it's tree-lined and that's good for air quality. It also provides great space for walking, biking, and running. And it's connected to a lot of small parks, so even if you want to go out there with your family, you can take a walk down the trail and visit all of the different small parks that, that exist on the trail. So there's actually an exciting event coming up that um, I will be inviting Lucha residents to, as well as you all. Anyone who's interested can come. It's sponsored by the Trust for Public Land, as well as Westtown Bikes. Um, and it's called um, the Parade with Light along the 606 Trail. And essentially, people are invited to start at 4.30 on Sunday, December 17th at the Exelon Observatory, and there's going to be um, everything you would expect from a parade. So there's going to be illuminated bikes, there's going to be clowns, there's going to be all sorts of exciting things um, for all ages. And um, participants are invited to bring a, um, a small glow stick in order to join the procession. And the, proces the procession will go from the start of the Exelon Observatory all the way till the end of the 606 Trail at Ashland. So that's going to be something that is very, very exciting and it would be a great way if you haven't actually gotten a chance to try out the 606 trail going on a parade I think would be a great way to get introduced yeah, yeah. so that's as far as bikes go and um, another thing that we've been sort of working on is um, bringing in professionals and experts into our Lucha buildings in order to put on info sessions for our residents. So we've done that um, with two different organizations. One was with Prime Care Health and the other was with the American Lung Association. So with Prime Care Health, we brought in some of their representatives to give a short talk in both English and Spanish about um, signing up for health insurance and how to navigate problems with your health insurance. So we had um, people who attended that talk and then they were given the opportunity to actually sign up for an individual slot where they could be um, have a half hour of counseling with one of these professionals um, in health insurance and health care where they could go through some issues and some of our residents were very found that very helpful. They were able to get some more discounts on prescriptions and things like that. So part of my job is also to bring people who have that outside expertise um, and connect them to um, the needs of our residents. So um, recently we also had the American Lung Association come and talk about um, lung health including um, asthma, the dangers of smoking, and um, the dangers of having a lot of dust in your home. So they were able to give residents a lot of really useful information about um, you know, how, uh, how to go to a doctor's visit when you have a lung problem, and they also talked a lot about um, smoking, quitting smoking, so they gave some great resources, and it also gave some residents who had been, um, had a lot of um, struggle with quitting smoking a chance to sort of discuss their problems with quitting smoking and how hard it was, and it gave us an opportunity to appreciate, you know, that they're really, really working hard to do something that is extremely difficult. I would just add, we've had some difficult discussions with our tenants none was more difficult than the idea of suggesting that there might be smoke-free buildings or that we might take their existing building and make it smoke-free. It really um, brought out a lot of um, health issues um, and uh, a lot of uh, angst over whether people can quit smoking or not. It was a fascinating discussion. Um, as we're getting towards the end of our time, and if you're out there and thinking about how can I have a healthy home of my own, I wanted to tell you about some of the upcoming workshops that our first time home buyer division is having at our building at 1152 North Christiana. They're held on Saturday from 10 to 4. Um, there's the following um, December 2nd, well, we um, passed that one, December 16th, January 6th, January 20th. February 3rd and February 20th. And again, I'll, um, here's our information uh, if you're interested in finding out more about our first time home buyer workshops. So is there something you'd like to say as we uh, work towards the end of our period? I think that's it. If anyone out there watching has any questions about health and wellness resources in Humboldt Park or in the city of Chicago, please feel free to contact and ask for Rachel and I would love to chat with you. Thank you very much. 
Um, so I think we still have a little bit of time. So um, one of the things I'd like to do is to, um, on the bicycle side, um, you know, we've everything that Rachel's done and everything that we've done, we've um, been very uh, grateful to have strong partners in the community. So maybe we can just talk about them again. Um, I'm my favorite is Westtown Bikes. Um, they love bikes, and they're um, always promoting them. <laughs>